What's going on everyone? Art at Patience Metal Fab, and I'm out here with Brian, one of the owners of the business today, and we've got an E46 Beamer on our lift for a very good reason. Now we do a ton of custom work around here, but the most frequent repair we get, it seems to be these E36 and 46 BMWs. And I know subframes are always a topic of discussion on these, and that is the reason this one is in here for. So Brian, can you give us the breakdown on the issue and then the fix that we're gonna be doing on it? Yeah, so the issue we have with these, uh, it is dubbed as like a subframe repair, but actually the problem is the rear axle carrier panel, which is the subframe floor, where the subframe mounts to that emits the cracking. And it's usually uh, diagonally a torsional load on the front uh, passenger front subframe mounting point and the driver's rear subframe mounting point where we see cracks and splitting in the actual floor pan. Uh, this repair is very, very common in the early 2000 E36, E46 chassis. It's a repair we specialize in. A lot of other shops in town will send uh, this repair for us as it is pretty involved and most people aren't aren't set up to do this properly So what we do here is we'll drop subframe. We'll drop gas tank do a full inspection and really assess the damage uh, And then from there we have uh, a number of outfits that we use AKG Motorsport bushings uh, Reedish Motorsport reinforcement plates and then this particular car is getting a Vince bar kit from Practical Performance, which is just an additional reinforcement we will mount on the top side of the floor pan to really tie it all together. And the purpose of this video is gonna be a bit of a how-to. So if you're doing this at home, hopefully this step-by-step -step process helps you out. Or if you're a future customer that has one of these cars that wants to bring it into PMF, then you kind of know the work that goes into it and exactly how involved it gets. So I think we should get started on this and then chart the entire process from start to finish for you. I made surprisingly quick work of that subframe and that's thanks to the dozens of BMWs he's done for this repair. How does this one stack up with the others? I'd say this one's probably more on the minor side. Um, as far as the passenger front subframe mounting point here, as you can see, we do have some cracking. Generally, you'll see where you're starting to separate here where it's affected one plug weld and two of them. And then if we cross over here diagonally to the driver rear mounting point, you can see I just scraped a line just to show you kind of how they crack in the trajectory. I'd say this is a pretty normal crack. Sometimes they'll go up into the pan. Um, as I start to remove seam sealer and undercoating, we'll give it a, a, a final bill of health. But I'd say this one was definitely worth fixing and, and it'll be very valuable to the customer. Even though this is considered relatively minor, you could still see significant cracking and it's only gonna get worse with time. So he actually caught it at a good point. If you guys have a BMW that you suspect is having the same issue, it's never too early to address it. What would be a worst case scenario when you took a subframe off? 
Worst case scenario is when these cracks start to really grow up into the carrier panel, uh, the, the pieces of sheet metal will start to, to delaminate themselves. And then when we go from there, we'll check the wheel arch uh, pinch weld here where it'll start to pop the spot welds. Primarily, I see it on the passenger side. As you can see, one of the spot welds right here is starting to let go a little bit. And basically what that's doing is the floor pan and the wheel tub are starting to separate from themselves. That is kind of a worst case scenario. Then we jump into the trailing arm pockets. Uh, not as common on the 46 as it is the E36, but I like to check the spot welds all the way around the perimeter of it and just make sure they're in good shape. So next steps for this to be, we're gonna remove the gas tank, disconnect the filler neck, uh, lower the EVAP canister cover and partially disconnect the EVAP to get it out of the way as our coverage plates cover back here. So there's just a little bit more disassembly to do, but we're almost there. And then we'll chuck up wire wheel, really buff out the areas, get them clean of all the wax and sealers, give it a final assessment. And then from there, how we'll go in and fix the cracks is we'll chase them up, we'll terminate them with a drill bit, we'll come back and we'll stitch it shut, grind it smooth, and then we'll install the Reedish Motorsports uh, reinforcement plates uh, and then from there we can go in and weld those in seam seal it back shut with all the OEM sealers and glues we use and then move to the top side As you can see on the top side of the subframe mounting points here, we've gained access to the top side, and this is where a lot of people don't fully complete this repair. What we're doing is we're inspecting the two welds from BMW, and in this case, the majority of them are there. Sometimes I see these where these aren't even here, but it's really hard for you guys to see, and the camera might get it, but we do have some cracking that goes up the back side and then some cracking that goes across the weld here. We're gonna grind these OEM welds down smooth and then come in and basically fill this pocket where it's missing and then follow the minute stress cracks up to fully complete this repair. Then we'll grind it down smooth again. And then we have this component here that will drop in, that will plug weld to the top side of the rear axle carrier panel and then the subframe bolt will protrude through up and basically clamshell it now. Looks like the interior on the M3 is going back in, which must mean we're about to wrap it up. The last thing I caught Ben working on was this piece back here, and I wanted to grab Brian to kind of explain what it is because I am not familiar with this fix on the subframe. So this fix here is a little bit above and beyond the standard uh, rear axle carrier panel uh, fix. This is dubbed the Vince Bar Kit by a guy named Vince, uh, Practical Performance R&D 
He is out of Sweden, I believe. Uh, we put in his kit a few times before, but what this does is it really ties the rear portion of the subframe mounting points into the frame rails to help uh, help with that side, that ladder load, almost acting as what I perceive kind of like a strut bar. So uh, we've done a few of these. It, it, again, it is a little bit above and beyond. You do have to cut into the top side of the rear axle carrier panel and basically land this in there. Uh, and at that point, we're sandwiching uh, the bolt and it's no longer a blind hole. And then after that, uh, we come in with a little cavity wax and a long four foot straw and just coat the inside um, so all the backsides of all the welds we've done don't continue to rust or oxidize. And then I come in finally and replicate and spray in these OEM sealers, as you can see here. We have a pretty slick gun we use that can replicate the texture of sound deadening and OEM sealers to kind of give it that finished look. So would you say we've kind of gone above and beyond what the normal subframe fix would be? I would say absolutely. Uh, the normal subframe fix is what we've done. This is just kind of that next level. This is kind of your weekend warrior repair. Anything above here, if someone were going to actually track the car and race it, is we'd go full ham on it and tie the cage into the top sides of these subframe mounting points. Uh, that That is like the end result repair, but for most HPD days, uh, guys that are track warrior, and this is, this is suffice. And what's cool, by the time we put the last bits of the interior in, you're not even really gonna be able to tell that this took place, and that's exactly what the customer wants with a car like this. So Brian's gonna finish up, and then we'll probably go take it on a quick drive around the block, and we'll wrap this episode up. The next day. Brian had that E46 out for a test drive yesterday and everything was good. So the customer picked it up already and it freed up space for our next M3. You can see we've already got the subframe out and the reinforcement plates mocked up. So Ben is gonna be doing the welding on that as soon as he finishes up taking all the bushings out of the subframe. You guys already know the process since you watched the video. Hopefully you really enjoyed that one. We're gonna be staying busy with this stuff. We already have another M3 after that coming in. So just like outside, when it rains, it pours with these projects. We expect to see a ton of these BMWs throughout the rest of the year. Now, if you guys have something in need of repair or you just wanna be proactive about it, you can always reach out on patientsmetalfab at gmail.com or on any of our social media or website. I'll put that stuff down in the description. And if you guys really enjoy this content, do us a favor by liking the video, subscribing to the page, check out some of the other projects that we've already put out and things that we've got coming up. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.